Hey everyone, Jason here once again with Inkspit Designs. Got another great tutorial for you today. Um, I'm pretty excited because this is another tutorial uh, for, suggested from a listener or a viewer, subscriber I should say. And so I'm always excited to be able to, to do those. I love when you guys send those in. Uh, this one is from Alpha Web Design and they're over in Ireland, which is pretty cool. I'm here in uh, California and uh, near Los Angeles and we're communicating, doing stuff, uh, ideas from a company all the way in Ireland across the, the globe. So it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, in his note to me, his, his message here, he says, I subscribed to your channel, really like your videos. Thanks for sharing. Uh, I'm wondering if you have time, could you please do a video on, say, for example, a vinyl wall decal or, or a vehicle decal? Uh, we've done st some stuff on that. He says, any type of design that needs to fit within a certain space and is usually made up of some large words with some smaller words. If you could explain the process of cutting these out to the required sizes so that they fit within the space as required uh, and also how to do this with it without wasting too much vinyl. As in, can you line them up uh, beside each other to cut them all from a 20 by 24 inch piece of vinyl? Say for the example you need two words that were 20 inches by 4 inches and maybe have 5 or 6 smaller words that are roughly 1.5 inches high to make up a quote or something like that. Uh, what do you or when do you set the sizes to be cut out? I hope you get what I mean. All right, so that was a lot of info, but I, I think I got, I got what you're saying here. Um, let's start here in Illustrator. And first thing I always do, if I know I'm going to be cutting from a certain size vinyl, and here he says a 20 by 24 inch piece of vinyl, why not just set up the artboard in that size? So we're going to set up a a new uh, new size here. I'm going to use inches here in a, a print style, and he says 20 by 24. So we're going to 20 for the width, 24 for the height, and let's get that up. All right, so now we know our sizes. And I don't know, not, by default, Illustrator doesn't open up the rulers. I don't know why. You can set up a template to have them already open, but it's a simple command. Um, hold down Control and hit R, and you see that brings up our rulers on the sides. And we can see here, if you're looking, 20 by 24 is what we get. Zoom out a little bit so you can get the whole whole piece. All right, so let's start. He's got some text here. Let's start, um, and let's use his his company here. Let's go for Alpha. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. And let's say I want this all in caps, but you didn't type it in caps. Instead of deleting it and typing all in caps, remember in the character panel down here, just click the all caps, and we, we get that. All right, so let's take that. He wants, let's see, he wants... Uh, two words that were 20 inches by 4 inches. So now the, th the thing you're going to have to remember is that to keep everything in perspective, it's not always going to work out exactly the proportion. So here, if we come over into our transform panel right over here on the side, I'm in this a lot. This is where you're going to keep track of your sizes. Um, to answer his question quickly, or one of his questions, I size everything in Illustrator. And then when I go over to the plugin to cut it out through the vinyl plotter, through the cutter, I don't have to worry about sizes. Everything's already been sized in Illustrator. You can just do design something and set sizes in the the plugin, but I don't know. It seems like you would want to do it just once in Illustrator. It makes sense just to do it the one time, and then you don't have to worry about sizes when you go into the, the plugin. You can just basically line everything up and hit cut. So we'll show you that. So here we go. Um, we're going to do 20 inches, and as you can see, it brings it all the way to the end. You want to leave a you, you know you got to leave a, a little room for clearance for the rollers. You got to keep that in mind. If your piece of vinyl is exactly 20 inches, you probably want to keep an inch or so on either side. But with his uh, dimensions here, we'll go 20 inches, and that puts us. If you look in the height, this little uh, link here, you want to keep that because that's going to keep the proportions constra constrained. Now let's say he wants to have it. He doesn't care about the proportions so much. So I'm going to uncheck that, and in the height here. I can go to four inches and hit enter because that's what he specified. So, and with certain fonts, it's going to look really funny, and other fonts, it's not going to really matter. So, um, and he wanted a second one, the same size. Let's do uh, design. So we're going to come over here. We want it 20 inches and four inches. All right. So we got our two 20 and 20 by four uh, size designs, and then he wants. Uh, five or six smaller words that are one and a half inches tall. So let's get, uh, let's go ahead and use uh, web. We didn't use web. What, you know, this company's web design, but let's. 
and we're gonna go for let's just keep it in perspective see what it looks like uh, well, he just gives us the height so one and a half inches whoop, that's the width we want one and a half inches tall all right so we can see that uh, that gives us that. Now if we hit control, you might know holding down alt and holding down the shift key keeps it all constrained and makes a copy. And then if we hit control D, we're going to make some copies. So there's five, there's six. Um, and there's, okay, so that's what he's asking us. So let's say we want to <clears throat> cut all these out and we want to use as little vinyl as possible. So we want to, you know, put it up to the edge and everything. Um, and that, by the way, is called, it's called different things, but a gang print. You know, if you have, say, you have several different uh, types of designs or text or something and you want to fit them all within one piece or one print, you would group them all together so that they fit nice and tight and uh, maybe you send it off to a company to create, you know, uh, transfers for you so you could do screen, you know, do t-shirts or something like that. But in this case, we want to fit all this vinyl. So we want to gang it up pretty close, keep everything nice and tight. All right, so that's basically it. We've got everything nice and tight. And as you see, we can look at our dimensions and look in the transform panel. They're exactly what uh, what he specified what we want. This way, we have everything selected when we go into our... And in my case, I use a graph tech. I've mentioned before, I use a graph tech plotter. I've showed it to you in, in some of my other videos. Come in here to uh, Cutting Master 3, which is the plugin that comes for free with our, our plotter. Your plotter should have some kind of a... Hopefully some kind of a plugin or something. Illustrator out of the box doesn't have an interface to communicate directly with a, a plotter that I know about. So each manufacturer supplies some type of a, an interface or a, a plugin that you can install. And uh, here we have uh, Cutting Master for our plotter. Uh, so we, we click that and what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and load up the plugin. And uh, I don't have the plotter turned on right now so we're not going to do anything with that but you'll still be able to see everything within the, the plugin. All right. So here's the interface, <clears throat> and if we look, oh, uh, you know what? Let me show you in the other version. Since I don't have the the plotter turned on, it's gonna act a little weird. But I have I use Cutting Master two and Cutting Master three. Cutting Master three is the newer one, but some things Cutting Master two uh, still does better. So I use it for certain things, such as um, contour cutting. For some reason, it works a lot better. Okay. So if we look here, here's our piece of vinyl, and because I don't have the plotter turned on, um, it's not going to size it to exactly the the 20 inch uh, piece of vinyl that we have, because I use either 15 inch pieces, I use rolls that are 15 inch or 24 inches. But let's say this is our the same dimensions as we have in uh, Illustrator. It's going to size them exactly the same, and then we don't have to worry about it. Now let's say for whatever reason you do want to do your sizing in here, you need to change something. Well, you have all the options available to you. Um, you can come up here to, you see the, the dimensions here, um, 9 by 15, again because we don't have the plotter turned on, but you've got all of the uh, the position you wanted to start cutting at, all of the options available to you. You've even got layers. If you got certain things on certain layers, you can uh, turn them off and on. Tons of different you know options you could see to make tiles. You make extra copies. Um, it is all available for you in here. So to answer your question, you can do it in the pl in the plugin. I just do it all in Illustrator. It's a, a lot easier and a lot smoother in my mind. Now, kind of as a bonus and an add-on, something I wanted to talk about for a while. Um, let's say you know you have a certain thing you want to put a decal on, a vinyl decal, and you know the exact dimensions. Well, how do you how do you work that? Or how, let's say a car. A lot of you are putting decals on cars um, to advertise your business or whatever it is. Well, let's, uh, let me show you here. Let's start a new document. Um, we can keep it the same size. That's fine. And let's say I want to put uh, a decal on this Ferrari. Okay. I want to put it right here um, in, in the doorway, kind of in the door. Now, Illustrator is a vector-based program. It doesn't work as the same way as Photoshop does, but you can still use your images. So bring in your images. Um, now, say I have a client that brought me this Ferrari. It could be any kind of car or any kind of an item, whatever it is. Um, say they want to, they call you and they want to decal on something. Well, if you can get them to send you a picture of it um, and the, the measurement, then you can not only size it exactly the right size, but you can also see exactly what it's going to look like and email them a proof so they can visualize it. Sometimes that's the hard part is, is for the client to visualize what it will actually look like. All right, so what I'm going to do here, um, you can see the... It's on the artboard. Let's just make the artboard the same size. 
and I'm going to lock this in place on the layer here so it doesn't move. Lock it in place and I'm going to do another layer and I'm going to put my vinyl decal on top. Um, just click on this. Alpha designs. I think it's alpha web designs. But, oh, we'll do that. Okay, let's capitalize it. Let's give it a different font. Let's say we. I don't know that you'd want this on a Ferrari, but for the sake of uh, of this, actually, let's uh, let's say we want to do a top and bottom here. All right, now. All we need to know, and you can line it all up and do whatever you want, but all we would need to know, we would have our client or we would go out and measure ourselves, but see, get the Ferrari and we would take a measuring tape and we would measure, we could measure whatever we want from the crease of the door here that you're looking at to the end of the door. We could measure from the, the front of the wheel well, or actually the back of the front wheel well, all the way to the front of the rear wheel well. And uh, let's zoom in a little bit. And then we would know exactly our measurements. Then when we come into Illustrator, all we would do is one of the things we could do is take our measure tool. M many of you might not have ever used this, but uh, it's hiding in the tool bar here under the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper tool is probably on top. Click on it, go to the measure tool. And let's say we measured that space um, all the way in the middle section of the car. We would take our measure tool and uh, hold down the shift key so it's, it's a straight line. And then that tells us if we look over here in the info panel, that it, it, it's saying negative because we measured it right to left, but 11 inches. All right, let's say we know, now, now let's say we know the car is, uh, you know, let's say it's, a, a, let's say the door frame here is a, a two foot wide space. All we need to know is we need to get this picture to that same size, all right? So 24 inches. So what we want to do is we want to, we're going to unlock our, our picture of our car and hopefully you've gotten high enough resolution and remember the image quality doesn't matter so much it's nice when you're showing your, your client a proof but if you can uh, let's hold the shift to make it bigger if you can make it big enough you just want to basically make it big enough so that that door frame is the size that you want and we, we said we wanted let's go right to left we said we wanted 24 inches right two feet so right now we are getting uh, up there in the, the info panel we're getting 12 inches so we need to double it so for things like a car it's it's a big object right so you're gonna let's double it let's see how that looks our measuring tool <clears throat> right to left and 24 inches and, and here I'm showing 24.4 inches but close enough for the tutorial you guys get the idea so now if we lock it back in place you can see that's just the square the black square is the outline of our artboard if we want to make it the same size just go to artboard under object artboard fit to artboard bounds we can lock that layer in place so we're not able to move the, the car and then now we want to do is grab our our vinyl decals and size them up to exactly the size that we want let's say because now we know the exact size of the car this is the true to life like size of the car it's going to be bigger than what we're we're talking about here but size it up to four or five feet whatever that door frame might normally be and now we can see exactly how it's going to look and a bonus it's actually the exact size so right now we're measuring this at uh at 16.0509 uh, by seven inches high so 16 inches wide by seven inches high if the door frame or the door uh, was in fact two feet wide which is probably larger than that so there we go now all we would do is we would go uh, file and go into our our cutting software and we would just cut it out and we would exp you know to send this to your client you go to file and uh, export it uh, actually just choose save for web and you'd send a proof this would come up and choose if you want to do it in a JPEG, 
um, a, a PNG. This is a with a, a photo in it. I'd probably do it as a JPEG, and it's taking longer than normal because it's a, a larger file, larger registration, um, and so. And we got screen recording going on as well. So, but you would basically send a preview or, or send a, a proof to them, exporting it as a as a JPEG, and and be able to send it. I'm going to cancel out, so we don't have to worry about that. But you get the idea. Being able to measure true to life things and uh, and send out your graphics for it, and that goes along with I think with uh, Alpha Web Design's question about how to size things, line them up all together, and then um, and be able to cut them so you're not wasting any material. All right. So hope this was uh, useful to you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or any follow up or anything like that. Uh, like the like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to us for more tutorials coming soon. We got lots of ideas, lots of things that we want to do, and send us your ideas just like Alpha Web Designs did, and we'll uh, we'll post those up. All right. See y'all later. Peace.